Last week, I designed a 3D printed hovercraft that could be printed in one piece without any support material. After a bit of testing, I found out that the skirt had to be modified from a C-shaped skirt to a vented bag skirt. I quickly tested this by taping the inside of the skirt to the bottom of the hovercraft and had pretty good results. Now, there were a few issues with the version 1 of this hovercraft. In terms of the design, I wasn't happy the way that the skirt had to be taped to the underside of the hovercraft to create the vented bag skirt. This was a bit of a shortcut solution and I wasn't really happy with it. There was also an issue with the skirt tearing because I designed some skids underneath the hovercraft so that when you lower the throttle it would slide a bit. However, because the skirt sat between these skids and the ground, it tore holes in the skirt. The other issue with the hovercraft was the length of it. Because it has to be printed vertically, it requires a build height of about 220mm. Now I believe the Prusa series of printers are one of the most common 3D printers ever, and I believe the max print height on those are about 200mm. Therefore I wanted to shorten the design by about 20mm to make it possible for more people to print. So here is the version 2 design. It's 20mm shorter than the version 1, and as well as having an outer skirt clamp, it now has an inner skirt clamp rather than using tape. And to make sure that the air can vent out of the skirt, there's many many holes in the section where the inner skirt clamps to. Now because this new inner skirt clamp is the lowest point in the hovercraft, it essentially takes the role of becoming the new skid. This should help protect the skirt when shutting off the throttle and letting it slide across the ground. However, I still wanted to try some different skirt materials. I decided on purchasing some polyester material after searching through some hovercraft forums. I read that ripstop nylon normally needs some kind of silicone coating to prevent it from being too porous and letting the air leak out and that polyester was a better material at this sort of scale. But I couldn't really get it to inflate properly, either from being too heavy or too porous. The next day, the UK received its two day allowance per year of snow, and I decided to remake the bin bag skirt and give it a quick test. It was pretty windy outside and the hovercraft kept wanting to windmill into the wind. But other than that, it worked pretty well on snow. I did notice that at high throttle settings, or at high speed, it became difficult to control in the corners. It seemed to want to oversteer and the rear would swing round, making it difficult to keep a continuous drift. Over the next day or so, I did a lot of testing, and I mean a lot of testing. I probably drove the rest of my family a bit mental, but I found that the centre of gravity of the hovercraft was really important. Balancing the hovercraft left to right was pretty obvious, and if I moved the battery to the left, the hovercraft would tend to steer to the left. If I moved it to the right, it would tend to steer to the right. However, I didn't really know what would happen if I moved the battery forwards or backwards. Once I got used to driving the hovercraft around, I started to understand the cornering tendencies that it had. I found that if the hovercraft was nose heavy, it would tend to oversteer and the rear would swing round. And if the hovercraft was tail heavy, it would tend to understeer and want to exit the corners every time you let go of the controls. So I was ready to finalise the hovercraft design until a few of my friends said they couldn't fit the 200mm tall print on their Prusa printers due to upgraded hot ends. So I came out with the version 3. The version 3 is yet again 20mm shorter bringing the total length to 180mm. The version 2 hovercraft was naturally nose heavy and was very difficult to shift the battery back without shoving it through the propeller. So on the version 3 I removed the electronics hatch at the front of the hovercraft and moved it to the sides. This reduced the amount of 3D printer filament up the front of the hovercraft and also removed the weight of the regulator and receiver at the front. Also, with a lot of headaches and retro designing, I managed to squeeze the rear end of the hovercraft by about 10mm, allowing the battery to be shifted backwards. Now I really like the way that the version 3 hovercraft handled. Because it was the shortest hovercraft yet, and all of the mass was centred, it had quite a low inertia, which meant that it could change direction pretty easily. Because it was so short and the centre of mass was quite close to the rudder, it started to lose its steering authority. Even with the triangular rudder that I came up with last week, it still struggled to make quite tight turns, and because the rudder was quite close to the centre of mass, instead of causing a torque to turn the hovercraft, 
it would almost accelerate the hovercraft into the turn. Now in some scenarios this might be an advantage because it could help the hovercraft to hold a drift for a longer period of time. However, if you're trying to control the hovercraft in a small space, then a different rudder will be needed. So I've come up with this dual rudder system that works on one servo. The rudders actually extend out the back of the hovercraft and as the servo rotates them, the surface area of the rudder moves into the middle of the airflow from the propeller. Now this increases the distance between the rudder and the center of mass, which then increases the torque produced and therefore makes the hovercraft turn tighter. I then received some clear ABS filament from 3D Prints UK and had an idea. So in case you couldn't tell from that little video reel, I thought I'd run through the uh, parts of this new hovercraft that I built. Essentially it's 3D printed out of clear ABS which was provided to me from uh, 3D Prints UK, my filament sponsor, and I've acetone smoothed it to make it super clear, especially here it's about two layers thick and you can, you can see through it pretty well. You can see the receiver and the 5 volt regulator inside there, as well as on this side the speed controller. Now, I've probably gone a bit too far on the clear plastic side, seeing as I've got a clear plastic skirt and also a, a clear propeller. But, um, you know, might as well have gone all out. Now, as you saw from the video reel, there was a small little video feed here in the bottom right-hand corner. And what that was, was a micro FPV system uh, mounted at the top here. Now, for those of you guys that don't know what FPV is, uh, this is essentially a micro uh, wireless security camera uh, which is modified for really small drones and what it does is it takes a video feed of standard definition it's not hd and it transmits it from this antenna and i receive it in these goggles uh, and these are almost like virtual reality style goggles uh, and it just receives it in the antennas here and what i do is i sit on the sofa with these on my face and i drive this around as if i'm playing a video game and uh, if i'm honest it's amazing fun What's also cool about this clear version of the hovercraft is that you can clearly see the air channels in here. I'm not sure how well they show up on the camera, but when you look at it with the human eye, actually, let me take the rudder off. If I take the rudder off, you can probably see under the right light, you can see the way the air gets channeled around this curve and into the side of the hovercraft. There we go. See that curve? It looks pretty cool. And under the right lighting, I might be able to show you the... No, it doesn't quite show up you can just about see the, the support vanes inside there for when it's printed vertically. Now, a few of you commented last week saying test it on water. Uh, however, I haven't actually found the time to find a decent place to test it. Around where I live, there aren't many lakes and I've been spending all my time trying to develop the hovercraft to try and uh, you know make it as good as possible before this week's video. If any of you guys end up 3D printing this, then uh, it'd be really cool if you could send me you know a picture or video or whatever of you testing it on water. Uh, make sure to waterproof the electronics because I can't guarantee water won't leak in through these small holes. Uh, it's probably best to waterproof them anyway, just in case it does sink. So, that pretty much sums up this week's video. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. As usual, the STL files to this hovercraft will be available to my Patreon supporters. If you don't wish to support me on Patreon, I've also signed up to another website called Gumroad, which you can purchase the STL files from there. As well as the SDL files, I've also spent a lot of time putting together an instruction manual, which contains a list of all the recommended components to build these hovercrafts, printing information, how to build the hovercraft, a skirt template, and also how to assemble the skirt in the most efficient way. So already from this video, you can probably tell that I've put in quite a lot of effort into this hovercraft, as well as putting the manual together. In fact, I think I've built about five of these hovercrafts this week. 
Now, because I've put so much work into designing, developing, and building this hovercraft, as well as producing the instruction manual, I have to announce that there won't be a video for the next four weeks. Now, the reason for this is that I'm going traveling over the next three weeks or so, and I had planned to backlog a few videos to still keep uploading on a weekly basis. However, this hovercraft has taken up every hour of every day for the last two weeks, so I haven't been able to do that. So, that's the end of this week's video. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. A huge, huge thanks to all of my Patreons for supporting me. And I apologise especially to you guys, as I won't be making videos for the next four weeks. And I hope you can appreciate the effort that went into these files and the instruction manual uh, as much as I appreciate your donations. So, thank you, thank you very much. And I'll see you in about a month. Goodbye.